नानम परमम धेयम नॉलेज इज सुप्रीम so last time we finished the proof of the fundamental theorem on symmetric polynomials so we have proved that the fixed field of with respect to sn of the polynomial ring is precisely the polynomials in s1 to sn with coefficients in k i just want to illustrate this by one example our process so for example so example look at the polynomial x1 square plus x2 square plus 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 xn square this polynomial is obviously symmetric polynomial this is symmetric polynomial in k x1 to xn so what is our process to write it as a polynomial in s1 to sn what so what is the multi degree term is this one x1 square is the multi degree of so 2 0 0 0 this is the multi degree of this polynomial f and we you know, want to cancel this term and so on but directly also you can see this is very simple if you take s1 and square it which is x1 plus 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 xn square so this is symmetric and we we subtract from this given polynomial f and then this term will get cancelled and keep doing it but in this case observation is very clear this is x1 square plus 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 xn square minus the minus the cross two terms so that is two times x1 plus x1 x2 plus x1 x3 and so on so for two at a time so this is nothing but s2 so this is therefore the given polynomial f this was f and i shift this two s1 to the other side so this f will be equal to s1 square minus 2 s2 which is the other side is clearly symmetric and this one this is the process so this is actually our proof is very algorithmic all right see this is one another remark i want to make is little bit uh, more serious because see we have proved that now i want to know about the rational functions so i want to say that the fixed field of sn of the rational function field x1 to xn this is equal to rational functions in s1 to sn this i want to check so obviously this is obvious because if it is a rational function in s1 to sn then all these sis are uh, fixed under every permutation therefore the polynomial will be fixed under every permutation and this is a polynomial divided by polynomial so therefore they will be fixed therefore rational function is fixed so this proof is clear but to the other proof it is little bit more serious because look at the example look at the following example 1 over x1 this is a rational function 1 over x2 this is also rational function plus so on and so on plus 1 over xn this is a rational function and what is it this is if i want to write it then uh, but how do you write this as a quotient uh, the we want to write this as some polynomial um, what do we call it some polynomial phi by some polynomial psi where this psi is a polynomial in s1 to sn and psi is a polynomial in s1 to sn so we need little bit more work so uh therefore we cannot say that if we have a rational function 
um, uh, g uh, f by g suppose f and g are two polynomials and i consider this rational function f g in k x1 to x n and if i call this as this is my rational function this is symmetric if f by g is symmetric then f and g need not be symmetric that is very easy because this is here is a above example you see if i if i write it if i write it what is phi and psi in this case psi will be obviously x1 to xn and phi will be what that will be i have to multiply this by x2 to xn and and so on and that will be the sum so therefore if a rational function is symmetric then the individually f and g may not be symmetric polynomial but you know this writing this is not a unique way of writing the rational functions so how do you um, make it more clearer so all right so um so i will take suppose f and g is f by g is symmetric assume that if f by g is symmetric rational function then i want to write i want to write f by g by capital f by g so that f and g are now symmetric then that will that will prove the other inclusion then this will prove this will prove this inclusion because i start with the rational function which is symmetric and i have written it as f by g where f and g are symmetric polynomials so i have to prove this and this means i have to i i am allowed to multiply up and down by the same polynomial then i this this fraction doesn't change that is the idea so what what will i multiply by so obviously uh, uh, note that if i want to have how do i make a given polynomial if i have given arbitrary polynomial f arbitrary how do i make it symmetric so to make f symmetric what i have to do is i have to take the product product is varying over sigma in sn sigma of f sigma f this is obviously symmetric because when i take any permutation apply a permutation to this product permutation is a k algebra homomorphism no so therefore this this will be product and therefore this is clearly symmetric because if i take apply sigma that is applying sigma here but then uh, because this is a group uh, this product will not change so it is symmetric either this or also another one is sum take the sum sigma f f f where is in uh, sigma where is in sn both these are symmetric polynomials both these are symmetric polynomials if note that if f is a arbitrary polynomial then this and this are symmetric this is what i will use it okay now obviously f is a factor here because sigma is identity so it is a factor f is a factor there so so let us call so given now so now given f by g in the fix sn k x1 to xn symmetric rational function then i am going to multiply up and down by h so h equal to product sigma g sigma g as g as sigma 
where is in SN, but sigma is not identity. Look at this product. So, obviously, what I said was the G is, uh, pro if I take product sigma in G, SN, sigma G, this is G times H. And the G times H is symmetric. And now, I am going to multiply up and down by, up and down by H. So, FH and GH. Now, this became symmetric. And this is my phi, uh, this is, uh, let us call this as phi. Phi was symmetric, phi is symmetric, phi is symmetric, phi was symmetric. So, I have symmetric and this is symmetric. Therefore, F H which is phi times G H. But now, because phi is symmetric, G H is symmetric, therefore F H is symmetric. So, therefore, both are symmetric. So, therefore, I, therefore, Therefore, we have written phi as, phi we have written it as some polynomial above because it is a symmetric polynomial, it is a polynomial some, H, um, some eta of S1 to Sn divided by theta of S1 to Sn, where eta and theta are polynomials in n variables over k and uh, this is therefore an element in k s1 to sn. So, that proves our theorem for rational function field also and we are interested in more in that. So, now I am going to deduce couple of corollaries from uh, this uh, theorem. So, for example, uh, corollary 1, okay. so suppose I have any polynomial f in one variable. Now, you see I am going to deduce consequences for polynomials in one variable. So, suppose let I have f is a polynomial in one variable over a field k, k field and suppose x1 to xn are zeros of f in l over k so i am taking all zeros we know that there exists a finite field extension l over k such that all the roots of f lie there this was precisely uh, Kronecker's theorem. So, I have a field extension where all the roots are there. Okay, then, then what? What am I saying? Then, given any polynomial, given any symmetric polynomial, polynomial F, capital F, symmetric is very important in n variables k I will call them k x 1 to x n. Given any symmetric polynomial in n variable capital F, if I evaluate this F at x 1 to x n, then this is an element in k that is what I want to check. So, that means what? So, proof proof. What we are doing is the following. We have a polynomial thing here k x 1 to x n and we have that field L where all these roots x 1 to x n they all belong to this capital L and we have the substitution homomorphism here epsilon, epsilon x. What is that? These variables capital X i is going to 
small x x. This is a k algebra homomorphism. And what I am saying now, if I have a polynomial f, capital F, symmetric means what? That is a polynomial in capital S1 to Sn. I have taken arbitrary polynomial f and this is contained here. All this, this is contained here. In fact, this is the fixed fix ring of this under the action of Sn. F is here and take its image here. A priori it lies in L, but I am saying it actually lies in K. So, f of x1 to xn, this is the image of f under this, this actually lies in K, that is what we want to prove. This is what we want to prove. Why is that? That is very simple, because what do we know? This is a polynomial in s1 to xn, and therefore, if I write this f as summation a nu capital S nu, this is running over nu finite finite subset and A nu's are elements in the field K and this is the, the standard notation what we are using that S1 power nu 1 Sn power nu n where this nu is nu 1 to nu n. Then where, where is the image? This goes to the same here, this is natural inclusion map and then I have to evaluate. So, where does it go? It this, this monomial, so this polynomial f goes to summation a nu because a nu's are constant, so they go to the same and this one will go to s1 evaluated at x1 to xn power nu1 and so on sn evaluated at x1 to Sn power nu n. This is where it goes. So, I only have to check. So, enough to prove, enough to prove that if I take any elementary symmetric polynomial Si or Sr and evaluate it at x1 to Xr, x1 to Xn, that should belong to K. This is what enough to check for all r from 0 to 1 to r n. Then all these guys individually they are in k therefore their powers are in k therefore the sum is in k and then we are finished. But what do you know about this? What is the relation between f roots and the symmetric function? So, remember f is splits into linear factors that is this. this is in L x. On the other hand, when I expand it, what do I get? I get x power n minus s of s 1 of x 1 to x n power x n minus 1 and so on. Middle term minus 1 power r uh, x power s r evaluated at x 1 to x n times x power n minus r and so on. The last term is minus 1 power n s n of x 1 to x n. This is what when we expand it and collect the terms together and these are where then these are precisely therefore, that is s r s 1 x 1 to x r x n so on s n evaluated at x 1 to x n these are coefficients of f and they belong to therefore k and the plus minus sign. So, therefore, all these terms they belong to k therefore, the, co the f evaluated at x 1 to x n will belong to k. So, that finishes the proof. So, this was Vite. Okay, so, that was corollary 1. Now, corollary 2. Okay, now, I want to say that 
um, the elementary symmetry functions symmetric polynomials I sometimes uh, interchange the word polynomials and functions, but they are same at least for us in this contest. Elementary symmetric polynomials S1 to Sn are in, in X1 to Xn are algebraically independent over K. That means they do not satisfy any relation among themselves, any polynomial relation among them. Not only linear, they are algebraically independent, no relation. So, that means this, so this means that means this, this polynomial, this subalgebra is actually a polynomial algebra, polynomial algebra over K is a polynomial algebra over k. So, they behave like a variable. So, proof, all right, proof is very simple. Proof, what do we want to prove? So, we want to prove that they are algebraically independent. That means, given any variables, k, n variables, y1 to yn, these are indeterminates, y1 to yn, are indeterminates over k. So, this is a polynomial algebra and from here we are giving a map to k x1 to xn. This map is what? If I want to give a map from one polynomial algebra to the other k algebra, I just have to give its values on the variables. So, I will map y i's to s i's and I want to check. So, let us call this map as uh, phi. So, phi is a k algebra homomorphism. Obviously, image of phi is a k sub algebra generated by the images of y i that is s 1 to s n and I want to now show the kernel of phi is 0 to show kernel of phi is 0. Once I show this, this symmetric uh, k subalgebra generated by the symmetric elementary symmetric polynomials, this will be isomorphic to k y 1 y 2 y n mod kernel, but kernel if I would approve 0, this will be isomorphic to k y 1 to y n. So, that is because of this. So, I have to prove this. So, that means what? I have to prove that the kernel is 0. That means, suppose f is in the kernel, suppose f capital F belong to kernel of phi. So, this f is actually polynomial in y 1 to y n. So, let us write it y 1 to y n and it goes to 0 means when I substitute y is capital S i is I get 0. And then what do I want to prove? I want to prove that f is actually a 0 polynomial. So, so, I want to prove to prove capital F is a 0 polynomial. That means, no coefficient of F is 0. All right. So, suppose it has some term which is non 0. So, remember we have written in our multi degree setup F, we have written it as summation A nu x nu. A nu is a tuple varying in n power n only finitely many terms non zero so suppose f were non zero if f is non zero capital f is non zero 
then there will be a multi degree term and there will be highest degree term so highest multi degree term so this f will look like a nu x power nu plus lower degree term lower degree lower multi degree i should say multi degree terms but now when we write like this when we write like this this nu which is nu 1 to nu n this is in our notation it is multi degree of capital f and therefore this monomial will not occur anywhere else in between in this this side it will not occur not only that all all the monomials are different so when nu is different this when nu not equal to mu then these terms are different so what will happen when will this x power nu will go when i put not x it should have been y here there are polynomials in y so when i put y is equal to capital s is what will i get i will get a nu s1 power nu1 sn power nu n and somewhere else here some some if there is some term here you will get uh, some b mu x uh, s1 power mu1 etc etc sn power mu n now i want to say that what is the what is the, the uh, multi degree of this this one so that we have seen multi degree of this one is nu1 plus nu2 plus 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 nu n comma nu 2 plus 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 nu n comma one at a time we are dropping so at the last one will be nu n minus 1 plus nu n comma nu n this is the multi degree term because is here here it will be when you raise it to power nu 1 that is the first one when you raise the next one is 2 power nu 2 that is this one and so on when you raise this what will be the last coordinate here that is uh, xn power nu 1 and so on so what i want to say is the following the multi degree terms are different so when nu and mu are not equal multi degree of s1 nu1 sn nu n is different from multi degree of s1 mu1 sn mu n so how can they get cancelled so nobody will get cancelled so all the terms are as it is they will appear in f of s1 to sn so therefore f of s1 to sn will also be non zero if f is non zero but uh, we are assuming that f were in the kernel so this is no so this contradicts this contradicts f belong to the kernel of what was the kernel of phi all right so we have proved that uh, corollary to that uh, the variables are uh, this uh, s1 to sn are algebraically independent over k next time we want to now therefore we are in the following situation now we have this rational function field k x1 to xn which contains the fixed field of sn this is and this is what is precisely the field generated over k by elementary symmetric polynomial this so we definitely know so remember that this sn and automorphisms of the field rational function field this uh, map here and sigma going to i want to define an automorphism of this field so uh, it's enough to define automorphism of the polynomial ring 
सो के एक्स वन टू एक्स एन टू के एक्स वन टू एक्स एन दि सिग्मा द सेम सिग्मा वेर एक्स आई विल गो टू एक्स सिग्मा आई दिस इज क्लियरली एन ऑटोमोर्पिजम ऑफ दिस पॉलम एल एलजिब्रा एंड देर फोर दैट विल गिव दैट वी कैन एक्सटेंड दैट ऑटोमोर्पिजम टू द रैशनल फंक्शन फील्ड that i'll call it again sigma only so therefore each sigma permutation on 1 to n will give you automorphism of this field this is a big field and moreover this map is injective because from this automorphism you can always recover back sigma that is in fact the in that is related to the inverse of this this automorphism so therefore this or in other words if sigma and tau are different these automorphisms are different clear because xi and x sigma i xi goes to x sigma i so if sigma is not equal to tau then at least one sigma i will not be tau i and therefore xi is an under sigma it will go to x sigma i and tau i it will go to x tau i but these are different therefore these are different therefore sigma is not equal to tau so it is injective group homomorphism injective group homomorphism so therefore this group sn is finite and so this this is a subgroup of this automorphism group so i want to remind you that we have proved earlier that whenever we have a field l l is any field and if i take a finite subgroup g of what l finite then we have proved that the fixed field this is operating on l therefore we have checked that fixed field of the g operation on l this is a subfield of l and this extension is galois extension with galois group G. Therefore, we have proved the following corollary. We have proved that k round bracket x one to x n over k s one to s n is a Galois extension with Galois group. S N. In particular, we have a Galois group S N of this extension. But remember, this is not Q. Our Galois problem is finding an extension of Q, which is Galois, and uh, Galois group is a given group. So still, we are far away from that inverse Galois problem. But at least this nice result is there that this extension is Galois. with galva group sn in particular the degree is n factorial so in particular so in particular degree of k x1 to xn over k s1 to sn this degree is precisely equal to order of the galois group which is sn and order of sn is precisely n factorial so with this i will end this lecture and we will continue studying symmetric polynomials more and the next what will come is the discriminant and then uh, i will also get uh, field extension and then we will find the order of that field extension and also we will find the galois group of that field extension and that will be precisely the alternating group so thank you and we will we'll continue next time